Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mr. Jovan Fodor, and I'm going to present you this presentation regarding behavior of steel concrete composite beams applying friction-based demountable shear connection. This investigation is performed at the University of Luxembourg under supervision of Professor Schaefer. It is a part of a broader research project named Eco Construction for Sustainable Development. My goal within this project is to develop a modular, demountable, and reusable steel concrete composite floor. The summary of this presentation is following. In the first part, I will introduce you briefly with the state of the art. In the second part, I will introduce you in detail with the detailing of the shear connector and the layout of the floor. In the third part, we will see layout and the results of the push tests. In the fourth part, we will see the results of the numerical model where we try to recreate the tests. Later, we will evaluate the composite beam behavior where this connection is applied. And in the last part, we will draw some conclusions. The inspiration for our own design were friction grip connectors and uh, clamp connectors as well. Uh, the friction grip connectors also utilize the high strength pretension bolt assemblies to induce the clamping force between the slab and the steel section. And their initial response is related to the slip capacity, while ultimate uh, capacity is related to the frictional uh, mechanism combined with the shear capacity of the bolt itself. Uh, Clamp connectors are completely based on the frictional behavior and uh, they're uh, interesting because they may be uh, placed after the placement of the concrete uh, deck and the uh, steel section. So they have a uh, huge tolerance uh, flexibility at the execution stage. Our own design leans towards the second typology of shear connectors, but it is devised using contemporary parts uh, we also use uh, this uh, rail channel with the uh, welded anchors that uh, is uh, embedded in the concrete uh, slab module. Uh, the connector itself is composed out of rail plate through uh, which the bolt is fitted and they slide through the rail channel. They are fitted through the slotted hole of the steel flange, followed by a back plate that provides additional thing surface. Then the large diameter washer is placed, followed by disc springs that uh, minimize the pretension loss during the exploitation. Uh, as this is this uh, concrete uh, slab element is a modular element, the uh, spacing between the rail channels along the width of the module is equidistant. So is the spacing between the shear connectors. Now you will see how the shear connection is sequenced so we have a bolt and the rail plate that slides through the rail channel and then through the slotted hole then we have back plate large diameter washer disc springs and after the positioning we may uh, preload the bolts and introduce the uh, shear connection between the deck and the steel section uh, it is important to notice that there is large uh, tolerance flexibility in both directions, so in the uh, direction of the slab span we have rail channel and in direction of the beam span we have slotted hole. Within the floor system the slab is comprised of a, a one-way solid slab concrete modules. Uh, they are represented by continuous elements spanning over two spans and simply supported elements spanning over just one span. Uh, as they are modular elements, uh, their dimensions, uh, width and the span, have to be uh, functions of dimensions of the standardized architectural grids. Uh, also, the span of the composite beam is a function of the width of the module, and the total width of the floor is function of the span of the module. In order to investigate the force slip behavior of the shear connector, we performed the push tests according to Annex B of Eurocode 4. We had three specimens. The shear connector was built around M24 HV high strength uh, pretension bolt assembly. From the previous investigation, we knew that the addition of secondary fanning surface will 
activate the bolt via shear and bending. So in order to allocate certain elastic reserve in the bolt material, the pretension force was 30% less than nominal. Uh, first specimen was uh, pushed monotonically in displacement control mode, while the later two were first cycled between 5 and 40% of the ultimate load obtained in the first specimen, and then pushed uh, as well uh, monotonically in displacement control mode. In the diagram are represented four slip curves per connector from the experiments. Uh, the four slip uh, behavior is represented by three stages. First, the slip capacity related to the slip capacity at the top fang surface, then activation of secondary fang surface uh, with bending of the bolt, and then we have sliding. Uh, what is important to mention is that uh, we were able to disassemble and completely reassemble the specimen. Uh, we did not observe additional uh, concrete cracks or the damage in the steel channel. Uh, what we did observe was the separation of the channel wall from the concrete, but this should not be the problem as the rail channel is firmly embedded in the concrete via anchor. In order to investigate in higher detail the connector behavior, we composed a numerical model. For this numerical model, we isolated uh, following uh, geometry, applying the principles of symmetry. Within the numerical model, besides the shear connector assembly, steel section, and the concrete slab, we also introduced the reinforcement that was embedded into the concrete slab. We had one point uh, RP1 to control the support conditions of the concrete slab, one uh, control point RP2 to control the load introduction, whether it is a displacement load or a force load. And we had one spring element between points three and four uh, in order to recreate the stiffness of lateral restrain assembly that we provided during the experiment. The obtained force slip curve from the numerical analysis was quite close to one that we obtained from the experiment. And based on this three-stage force behavior, our idea, our goal is to provide a three-linear force capacity model for this type of shear connectors. In the end, to evaluate the applicability of this shear connector type in uh, composite beams, uh, we integrated this shear connector in series uh, of composite beams uh, taken from the multi-story steel buildings in Europe design guide by Arcelor. Um, so we uh, applied uh, the shear connection uh, so that we always have a full degree of shear connection. This is how the spacing between the uh, the spacing of connector uh, rows uh, was chosen. chosen. Uh, what is important, uh, we recreated completely the sequencing of this floor typology. Uh, so we have a system that is pre-cambered and as well unpropped. So uh, first we have uh, the steel section that comes pre-cambered, then unpropped uh, uh, response for the self-weight of the steel and the slab as we place the modules, and then uh, after initiation of the uh, shear connection, we have a composite response. Here uh, you may observe the results of this analysis. Uh, so uh, what we can see is that the plastic moment we obtained in the model was slightly higher uh, uh, than the plastic moment obtained by the means of the plastic method. This slight difference comes uh, due to the slightly higher uh, lever arm in the numerical model and this difference drops moving to the uh, larger sections where, the, where this difference does not play a significant role. 
Um, at the uh, serviceability load level, we can see that the uh, difference between the deflection obtained in the model with uh, connectors that have this three linear uh, model behavior uh, is slightly uh, larger than the deflection obtained uh, if uh, by the uh, analytical uh, method if the complete interaction beam behavior is assumed. So we may say that uh, for the serviceability load levels, uh, the shear connector is stiff enough to provide a, a complete interaction composite beam behavior. Uh, and also when reaching the plastic bending capacity, uh, the slip demand, uh, highest slip demand is, uh, is lower than the um, available uh, slip capacity for this uh, connector. So uh, this we can also observe uh, from the longitudinal uh, shear distribution diagram. We see that for serviceability load levels, uh, the longitudinal shear distribution is elastic. And then uh, moving towards the plastic moment capacity at the mid-span mid due to the high ductility of the connector, uh, we might have the uh, almost uniform uh, distribution of longitudinal shear. The conclusions we may derive are following. We do propose a modular, demountable and reusable floor system. We have high tolerance flexibility due to the geometry of shear connector. The four slip behavior is represented by three distinctive stages for what we propose three linear design model. Uh, we propose that the composite beam within the floor should always have a full degree of shear connection. The stiff initial response of the connector should allow us to have complete interaction beam behavior at the serviceability load levels. And high ductility of the shear connector should allow for redistribution and eventually uh, for uniform distribution of longitudinal shear along the beam. And as we did not observe any uh, concretely related failure mode, uh, this encourages us to believe that uh, uh, most of our uh, components are reusable. So uh, thank you very much for your attention and for your support. And uh, please be welcome to pose your uh, questions and uh, to give your suggestions. Thank you.